the South Korean manufacturer Astel & Co have ventured into an area of firsts for the company. This company, as you can see obviously on the table, are a manufacturer of digital to analog players, DAPs, and IEMs, and other high-end hi-fi audiophile equipment. But as a rule, for their DAPs, they tend to stick to Delta Sigma chips for their DATs. But prior to Munich, they announced that they were working on an R2R resistor ladder DAP, which obviously is my passion here, subjectively for myself, and that their latest DAP in the SE line, the SE300, will be a resistor ladder R2R topology. I was very excited. So when I went to Munich High End, uh, check out the documentary here. This was their showcase and their piece. Shall we look together and see how it performs against this? This is their flagship, the SP3000. I'm Koji CEO. Welcome to Convince Me Audio. Let's begin. First and foremost, a very special thank you to Astel & Kern in the United Kingdom for sending all of these units in for review. It's very much appreciated and it was an absolute pleasure meeting you guys at Munich High End. They reached out and said, would you like to review our latest R2R resistor ladder DAP and our flagship SP3000? This one has been out for a while using an AKM chip and I said yes please let's begin. Incidentally the unit comes in at half the price of the channel's reference the Luxury and Precision P6 Pro. I will be doing a full review for you guys for this unit as well. This is around £1900 please check down below for the latest pricing and it comes in this very sleek sort of mobile-esque type of box with the outer sleeve taking that off and placing the box like this you open it up like a book. The DAP itself sits front and center in this little chassis case with a ooh, very nice screen protector. We're going to place that over here. And I'm gonna move that over here for now. The SP3000, we will come to that later because there will be a lot of comparisons. Lifting the tray, just the same as a mobile phone to be fair, you get a sleeve which contains screen protectors here and some documentation. You get a very nice USB-C to USB-A cable. Let's place that over Mia and put this here and clean up the desk a little bit. So this is the SE300, a flagship DAP in every aspect, only a little bit overshadowed by the pricing of its bigger brother, the SP3000. But there is so much to say in regards to that unit. This unit is constructed of steel and aluminium with a beautiful 1080p 5.46 inch display. Let's take a unit tour. So on the bottom of the device we have a spring-loaded micro USB card. This seems to be working nicely with a one terabyte memory card that I've placed in here. Then we have a fast USB-C charging 3.0 implementation here and also this can be used as a DAC for your laptop or your PC etc as well. Moving to the left hand side of the unit we have three rectangular buttons. Very clicky, very tactile, play and pause in the middle, fast forward underneath and rewind above. Rotating the unit around, going to the right hand side of the unit, we have this jog wheel. Very clicky with 150 steps of volume attenuation, plus an LED light behind the wheel to indicate the sample rate and charging. For example, red for 16 bit, green for 24 bit, blue for 32 bit, and purple for DSD. On top is where the exciting things are happening. The 3.5 single ended output has an impedance of 1.3 ohm and this outputs two VRMS, Pentacon 4.4 and 2.5 respectively output six VRMS with a 1.3 ohm 
impedance. Both of these can be used as line out as well. And I believe that 3.5 can be used as SPDIF optical out as well, if you require that. So very, very versatile, and you're not going to have any problems whatever IEM cables you have lying around. The shape of the unit is rather sharp, blocky with these liquid forming curves on the uh, right hand side of the unit. So your thumb tends to sit very nicely here like this. Apart from that, very basic, 317 grams. We will combine the internals with the functionality of this unit because they seem to go hand in hand. Forty-eight pairs of resistor ladder measured to very high tolerances of distortion at 0 0.01. Here's a full list of specifications scrolling down the screen now. This is a first for Astellum Kern, a resistor ladder DAP. I was so excited before Munich High End, knowing that this was going to come onto the market. And second of all, this was going to undercut the luxury and precision P6 Pro. I was very excited for that because this unit is half the price. Astell and Kern have implemented two amplification modes on this unit. That's class A and class AB. Bluetooth 5 that can support LDAC and all of the other codecs. Wi-Fi is implemented in this unit as well. 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bandwidths. This unit is room ready too. An absolutely fantastic unit that can support 32-bit up to 384 kilohertz with DSD up to 256. Not only this, you have non-oversampling on this unit, you have oversampling on this unit, and obviously like we mentioned the Class A and Class AB implementation of the amplification which all play a role when it gets to the sound. A very comfortable unit with a 5000 milliamp battery that lasts around 11 hours, so all day battery life roughly, depending on how demanding your IEMs or your headphones are um, and how loud you listen. And that's the unit. Simple, straightforward, beautifully designed, undercutting the competition price point wise, good battery life, covering every aspect of implementation you need for your connectivity. Aston and Kern have decided to go for Android on this unit, but it's locked down, you cannot install applications that you want from the Play Store. But there is a list of pre-approved applications on the unit, such as Tidal, Colbos, Apple Music, etc. You will not have any problems in regards to the music services you want to stream on this device. That is a problem on the Luxury and Precision P6 Pro. It's just a player. This is a streamer, endpoint, player. Honestly, it's so versatile. I am going to be extremely sad when this unit leaves. Also with the unit, Astell and Kern have provided us with the leather case that is proprietary for this specific DAP that you can buy separately. Smells like Italian shoes, very expensive smelling and fits the unit nicely. And those sharp contours of the device just blends away, obviously using the case like this. I do have one gripe with this case. All the connection points are open and free, which is fantastic for the USB-C. You don't need to mess about with the SD card. The wheel is here. All of this is great. But because there aren't any cutouts for the play, pause, rewind and fast forward, it's almost impossible detecting the play and pause button. Rewind and fast forward is fine. It's here and here. But the play and pause is in the middle and this has been a freaking nightmare. I mean, the Leather on the SP3000, as we will see later in the comparison, is a lot softer, so you can detect the bumps of the button. But on this one, the leather is thick, so that is a bit problematic, unfortunately. This case is very good otherwise, with this beautiful etching underneath here. That's my only gripe. So, let's talk about the equipment and headphones and IEMs used on this device. To give you a scope and understanding of how long this unit has been used for, first of all, resistor ladder topology requires breaking two to 500 hours. This unit arrived here post Munich high end around June and is now September. We've been using this three months solid, roughly three hours a day. So do the calculations and the math. So the time spent on this unit has been the daily driver and has been 
truly broken in. I've been using the following. So I've been using these. These are the Twin Pulse from Spirit Torino, a beryllium driver dynamic open back IEM, semi open back actually. Review for that will be coming. So subscribe so you don't miss it. Obviously the channel's reference, these are the Ambient Acoustics Mad 24s. This is the Avant in here. Another company that showcased their IEM at London Can Jam. They're such lovely people. And this is a 10, I think it's a 10 BA driver, semi-open again, IEM, with this 3 dB bass implementation. Um, it, it's a superb IEM. I can't wait to bring you guys a full review. This is the QDC Tiger. This is an absolute detail monster. One of my favorite IEMs under 2000 right now, period. This is exceptional. And we've been using one more. This, this is the Litshaw Cadenza, another flagship IEM that I absolutely adore. Plus everything else you see over there that I don't have room on the table to place. There's quite a few of them. This DAP is special. So with that, let's move on to the sound. The sound characteristics of the SE300 is very much in line with a resistor ladder stereotypical sound, which is organic, texturally rich, and very realistic sounding. This unit provides a pitch black background. Fortunately, it's not overly soft. It's very incisive. Stage is moderate to good. I wouldn't say this stage is bigger than the SP3000 uh, or the um, Luxury and Precision P6 Pro, but it's holographic and it's very well layered. Vocals are extremely rich and front and center and intimate. And they do have a tendency to step back when the track calls for it. It's very punchy, but most importantly, what you've got to take away from this unit is in its NOS Class A mode, we're gonna have to go through every segment of this sound characteristic and implementation of sound on this DAP is tonally correct, tonally rich, smooth, black background, warm mid-range. Starting with the Ambient Acoustics Mad 24s, those special units, these are very synergy dependent and source dependent. They are a world class. I've still not heard an IEM that sounds better than this. And I had a couple of $5,000 ones at the Can Jam London show as well. And these are still world's best. These are absolutely insane, but the equipment makes a difference and it seems to play to its strengths, which requires highly rich texture, black background, and an excellent tonal balance. And the control has been fantastic. I think this unit can provide enough power for headphones, but for IEMs, it can drive any IEM to its fullest capability without any worries. This has been fantastic. Stage opens up nicely. I wouldn't say it's the biggest I've heard on the Mad 24s to date, but it's definitely very accurate. Uh, tonally, it's one of my favorites. I think this sits perfectly in line with the uh, P6 Pro and the SP3000. There is no bass roll off, sub bass digs deep, punches hard, and there aren't any weird frequency response issues or overly noisy or dirty sounding. It's very clean, clear and precise and organic. One of the other highlights has been this one, the Twin Pulse from Spirit Torino. Rich, lush mid-range, very colored, excellent punch when you use a neutral nozzle on that unit, excellent sub-bass extension, very open stage. In fact, I think on this unit specifically, the Twin Pulse matches the Mad 24s for stage and where every element of sound can be defined, nothing is under the microscope the way sometimes an overly detailed amplifier can provide. No, everything's very organic and bound to the instruments itself. Um, but you just can't stop picking up the fact that this is texturally rich. This is very correct in its timbre and that beautiful black background. Though at the higher levels of volume, if you exceed 85 dB, which you never should, you can tell that distortion does begin to kick in. 
It's usually a far better experience around 85 dB and below to my ears. Feels like the background is so black it doesn't turn grey. It's very rich sounding and there is no peaks anywhere. As you can see, all of these IEMs are sort of tuned similarly, which are basically neutral dark. And it just seems to play nicely with this SE300. But what about this one? This is a neutral bright IEM, the Tigers. This one is detail forward most certainly. And I was shocked by the fact that it never became fatiguing, especially around like the upper mid range and 6K, 7K, 8K region. On certain Delta Sigma DAPs, I think if the synergy isn't quite right, the amplifier's uh, characteristics will come through uh, with the Tigers and you will be able to detect some sort of fatigue. But on this was smooth as silk and definitely beautifully toned and the tuning is absolutely sublime. What happens when we go to Class AB? This has been Class A with NOS mode. Class AB tends to sound a little bit more analytical. It's a little bit more noisy in its distortion and it's a little bit more dry. Yet still, the NOS characteristics of the resistor ladder still comes through. It still sounds very organic, but you can tell the amplification changes a little bit. It changes from that slightly warm, slightly euphonic sound for a more anal analytical listen. And definitely for EDM, this is the route I usually take. And I swap to class A for rock, for classical, for real instruments. But if I'm listening to fake music, as I like to call it, EDM, Monster Cat, Infected Mushroom, etc. It definitely is better to use the incisive nature of the class AB. It's a bit more forceful, attacky, and definitely leads a better credence to the edge of attack. But micro detail and macro detail is quite done well on this unit, genuinely. It's uh, definitely a flagship unit you can pick up on. Uh, versus something like the Poor 6000, a DAP I loved genuinely. I I've had so many DAPs here, it's funny that this has become the very first review on the channel. Um, I used to claim that as the best DAP under 2000 and it's what you should go for, but right now, due to the functionality of this unit, honestly, I would pick the SE300 over everything until I jump to the SP3000 and Luxury and Precision P6 Pro because nothing touches it from any manufacturer. It covers all bases in every aspect. So what happens when you go into oversampling mode? I don't like it. I don't like it with class A, I don't like it with class AB. You lose the timbre, you lose the tonal balance and you, use the, you lose the textural information enough to be noticeable on all of these flagship IEMs. On lesser stuff like the Kato, the Moondrop and stuff, yeah, it provides a very nice performance, especially in the electronic department. It's more incisive, it's a bit more attacky, it's a little bit more, feels a little bit more Delta Sigma um, if we're going to actually use these terms. But to be honest with you, when you go into the expensive category and well-implemented category, these sorts of things don't play that much of a role. Something like a Dave has fantastic timbre. I love that thing, it's fantastic, you know? So take it with a pinch of salt, but genuinely going back to NOS is where this unit shines. I mean, it's what it was designed for. NOS Class A is the best part of this DAP, but you've got Class AB if you fancy electronic music or if you want a bit more incisiveness and you've got oversampling if NOS is a little bit soft for you. NOS can be a little bit soft, a little bit laid back for some people. And if you've got like a dip in your frequency response of your hearing, like in the treble region where things would become a little bit overly soft, I think this might be a bit more conducive to your hearing because it does tend to sharpen things up a little bit in these sorts of regions of the upper mid range and treble region. Okay, how about the SE300 versus some of the other units on the market? Battle Royale time. First and foremost, let's take this one. This is their flagship. A much bigger box. This one has the case and the cable inside. First of all, we have two pieces to the SP3000. In this nice box, we have in here some screen protectors and a beautiful case. It's so cool that um, for the flagship stuff, they actually provide the case for you because the case is, I think, like a hundred pounds or something. It's not a cheap case at all. And the SP3000 provides this. 
and it's a soft leather very grainy very beautiful we're gonna compare that in a second to this uh, one with some screen protectors and some documentation in here okay <laughs> you have got to see this this is how you open the case box for the sp3000 it's like a rose opening up and i'm pretty sure there's some clumsy out people out there who have already dropped their dap because of this reason and like this yoink, it opens up like that and you just pull the unit out in here oh my god it's so heavy first and foremost this is the leather case for it and like i mentioned earlier the cutout for the volumes and stuff here is so thin you can feel the buttons very nicely um, through the case so we're going to place that case over there this one is a bit more shiny this one's a bit more matte i think i like this one way way more placing that over here this is the 500 gram nearly unit sharp as a knife look at this beautiful contours and edges this is a true premium flagship dap oh beautiful same implementation obviously 2.5 3.5 4.4 same layout buttons same USB-C, same spring-loaded micro SD card. So, placing that in here like this, yoink. These are the two DAPs. Pretty much the same size, but this one seems to weigh twice as much as this. This one seems to be empty inside when you pick this one up. This is something you can't really pocket. It's too heavy, 490 odd grams Full list of specification down here and I genuinely believe this is more feature packed than the SP3000. In the SE line, Astel and Kern tend to put their latest implementation and uh, test subjects as it were into their dApps and then it will trickle into the SP3000 later or SP4000 and the latest chipsets from the Delta Sigma category is usually in the SP line of dApps. But the software implementation has been so much smoother on the SE300. It's a little bit faster on the SP3000, but no problems in regards to glitches, crashes, etc. I've had quite a few problems with the SP3000, I am very unfortunate to say. Um, on the SE300, once Bluetooth is on, you can always connect perfectly. With the SP3000, when you connect to a device, the device and the SP3000 both control the volume, which is very dangerous for iOS devices because it has a tendency to go to 100% randomly. This does not do that. The SE300 locks the volume and controls the volume from the device itself. Second of all, as a Rune endpoint, for some reason, SP3000 had to be switched on every single time. I have never seen the SE300 drop from Wi-Fi drop from Bluetooth, drop from anything. And the range on the SE300 genuinely matches and beats Apple's Bluetooth implementation for range. It's been spectacular. My house is a Victorian house with very, very heavy brick walls. And the range this unit has, has been tremendous. Battery life is better on the SE300 in my use cases, and it's a better DAP for over-ear headphones, such as the Lyric from Meze Audio, the Binom ER, etc. Even the Focal Utopia. The SE300 seems to drive better for headphones than the SP3000. SP3000 is exceptional for IEMs, not as good for headphones. Okay, let's do a sound comparison between the two. I think the amplification inside the SP3000 is a better amp than the SE300 when they both warm up. That's something I'm going to bring up in a caveat section, so jump to that section if you're interested quickly and then come back to this bit, but I recommend watching the video right away through. Both of these units require serious warm-up time. We're talking 45 minutes. They sound excellent when you first switch them on, don't get me wrong, but you are nowhere near the capabilities of these two devices until you're 40 minutes in and they both warmed up, especially the SE300. Luxury and Precision P6 Pro has the same quirk. Stage is bigger on the SP3000. So if SE300 is here, SP3000 is here. I think the layering and the holographic nature of SE300 is better and I've got a feeling the DAC is playing a huge role here. The DAC is definitely better than the SP3000 and it's not even close in my opinion. But amplification for IEMs, SP3000 seems to be more incisive, more punchy. It genuinely feels like you have taken a desktop setup on the go with you. SP3000 is the king here. SE300, very close behind, yet 
demolishing the SP3000 in a DAC category. I think the SE300 is more rich sounding, more realistic sounding, more organic sounding. I think SP3000, genuinely these two remind me of the Hollow Audio May for real music and the Core Dave for electronic music. We have the same category here again. So you genuinely can have these two side by side. But what if you go into upsampling mode uh, and class AB versus SP3000? That's when SP3000 really pulls ahead because of its Delta Sigma implementation using the AKM chips, I think, and the amplification that pulls ahead in that category. But if you don't have a SP3000, the SE300 gets close enough that covers all bases. NOS, upsampling, Class A, Class AB, and the Bluetooth implementation demolishes the SP3000. Not only for range, but for organic nature, realism, and I genuinely believe about 70% of people won't even to be able to tell the difference between the Bluetooth implementation and playing off of the device. It's that good not quite on the levels of the Luxury and Precision P6 Pro that is still king, and genuinely I think that could fool 90% of people, but SE300 takes it in this category. Second of all is battery life. The SE300 seems to be doing standby better and a far more better listening time, length time than the SP3000. The standby time seems to be worse on the SP3000 and you still get a full day's battery life, don't get me wrong, but I think you can come back to the SE300 the next day and the day following after that and still have enough battery left over. Both of these units take a while to switch on and a few seconds to switch off. They are not P6P, which takes two seconds to boot and one second to shut down. So bear that in mind. It's an Android-based system for the both of them. The SP3000 tends to be a little bit more zippy around the UI, which basically has this carousel uh, at the front of the home screen, home button on the bottom, back, and then you can browse your music by music, album, songs, artists, etc. You can swipe down from the top to get Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, Class A, Class AB, NOS mode, SE. And then you have access to the full settings of all, it basically looks like an Android phone designed for audio. Um, what's good is that you can double tap the screen to wake it up. I've shut that down because it's bloody annoying. Um, you can dim the LED lights, the brightness, and it's basically the same as the SP3000. But for some reason, I seem to have a lot more bugs on the SP3000, and I've updated both of these units to the latest firmware. Wi-Fi is more consistent on the SE300, Bluetooth has a much better range, and sound quality is like we mentioned. But both of these, and neither of these, are quite on the levels of the P6 Pro from Luxury and Precision. That feels as though you genuinely have a desktop set up in your pocket and there's just something more refined about it, more detail, a blacker background, a bigger stage even than these two. It genuinely is the best DAP I have ever, ever tested. But I'm telling you, at half the price, the SE300 is 90% of the way there. This is the must-have DAP, and I think it's going to win an award this year from CMA. This does everything. It's not a jack-of-all-trades master of none. It's a jack-of-all-trades master of everything. It's fantastic. SP3000 at twice the price almost? Eh, I'd rather not. I'd rather not. I'll do a full review for you guys, but this is the king from its portability and versatility. What are some of the caveats? Android-based system, lockdown, you can't install anything that you want from the Play Store that might be of assistance due to audio. My scenario, accessibility, talkback. I can't put that on here. Very bad, very, very bad. That's very unfortunate for me. Second of all, the OS is a little bit slower than what you're used to in mobile phones, obviously. These are not phones, these are players. So. That takes a little while. Uh, I've had a few people complain when they've been here at the studio for testing and gone, okay, I can see a little bit of lag, but it's to be expected. These companies are not phone companies. These companies are audio companies. And seeing as they're running Androids, like a, there's a trigger in your brain that goes, okay, this is supposed to be performing like my phone, like a, for example, iPhone 14 Pro. It's not gonna do that. It's not 120 Hertz. It's not an A chip, right? This is using something like the Exynos 650 or something. So. Um, bear that in mind, but it is 
Zippy for music. It's pretty good, pretty decent. You've got all of your apps covered as well. Um, so that is one of my gripes, the uh, lockdown of the Android OS. Uh, the Fio ones don't have this problem where I can install the talkback, which is great for me. Uh, another gripe I think I have with the SE300 is the uh, kind of standby sort of mode where it, you do need to switch this off if you're not using it because otherwise the battery really does drain. It's an Android based OS and it's good, it's not bad, it's just not a P6P. P6P just shuts down and boots in one second unfortunately but remember twice the price. Apart from that, genuinely, I don't have a single gripe with this unit. Its price to performance ratio kicks ass. Its Bluetooth implementation is the best bar the P6 Pro at twice the price. Wi-Fi is consistent, range is fantastic. The resistor ladder implementation is superb, especially for the very first DAP in this region of this category for Astellan Kern. I love this unit. Oh, by the way, it drives headphones better than the SP3000. Lyric. Utopia, Binomial over there, check out the review for that unit, that's going to be amazing. Um, all superb. Harder to drive headphones, I don't expect you to put any of that stuff on here, like ears and things like that. Just don't do that, that's not what they're designed for. But easy to drive stuff like those, definitely. There doesn't seem to be enough oomph on the SP3000, unfortunately. Conclusion, should you buy the SE300? This is what you should be reaching for if your limit is $3,000 and below. This is what you should be reaching for. It covers all bases, it's light, it's portable, and it has every functionality you could require. Astellan Kern, this is amazing. So, build quality, five tigers out of five. Battery life, four tigers out of five. Sound quality, five tigers out of five. Implementation of class A, class AB, resistor ladder, up sampling, LDAC, five tigers out of five. Fast charging. Three and a half hours, I think, on this, on a comparable charger. Much faster, I think, on a very heavy duty charger. This has been an amazing experience. It's not just been a review, it's been a pleasure testing this unit. And the SP3000 is, in some of the categories, truly fantastic but when se300 comes out of the gate swinging like this unfortunately it truly over overshadows the sp3000 it's phenomenal i am genuinely curious about the sp4000 whenever that comes out if you like reviews as such as these consider joining our patreon where you get early reviews access to the telegram chat and access to me in regards to what I think of these products as soon as they land for review. Seeing as we're doing YouTube full time now, all of your donations are going in towards our editors, our cameraman, our video production. So any help that you guys provide is very much appreciated. Your share, your likes, your interaction in the comment section is very much appreciated. Until the next time, I'm Koji CEO. Peace.